Uh, my name is Anna McDowell and uh, I make Dorset buttons. A Dorset button is um, basically it's a heritage craft. It was unique to Dorset and uh, one thing I do is I concentrate on one design but in actual fact there are about four different ways they used to make these Dorset buttons. Uh, well a modern example of a Dorset button for instance um, this is what is known as a cartwheel design. Uh, this is an adaptation of something called an old singleton. Apparently it's named after a family who um, who, d who started to make them in Dorset. And these, and I'll just open this out, what are known as high top buttons. And they apparently were the first buttons uh, made, Dorset buttons made. And finally, you have something which is uh, called a bird's eye button, which is something like that. And they were made very, very finely and apparently used on uh, children's clothing. Right, the four main st uh, stages to a Dorset button. Uh, first, you have to blanket stitch round the a ring. It can be any kind of ring. I tend to use brass rings or handmade rings, depending on my project. Um, that's one that's half completed. Then you make the spokes by winding the thread around the ring and then you effectively, you actually, uh, and the fourth stage is effectively putting in the, um, uh, filling the button up and what you're doing is almost like a back stitch over each spoke, both the front and back, that shows you the button and the back of the button. Once the, uh, someone's got to grips with how to make a dorset button, uh, you, there are various ways in which you can use the techniques. Um, I tend to use the uh, technique of perhaps doing something with beading, where I put beads into a button. That's one example of very fine beads. And here's another example of using um, semi-precious stones which I've used on a, a vintage piece over there in my corner of my workshop. Um, you can use different designs, like you can make something what is known as the daisy pattern, or use vintage threads. That's a piece of wonderful vintage th uh, French thread. And this one I based on what is known as a uh, the Blandford cart. The Blanford crosswheel button, which is where the, uh, have you noticed, the, the threads are closer together when you wind your thread around your ring. The threads are closer together, unlike the cartwheel, which are further apart. With the singleton buttons, you can actually do things like embellish the top. I've used a bit of vintage lace and a few beads there. This one, um, I've printed a design on silk and then made um, a dorset button, a singleton button. Um, what else can you do? I've made like these bird's eyes, I've made wool ones which I put together. Um, I'm designing a picture here. It's Mark II of a picture that I'm doing called the, uh, uh, the Knitting Bee. I've decided to do a whole series of pictures known as The Knitting Bee. <laughs> You can make wonderful little, these are little things I've done for a wedding, um, where you've just embellished a dulcet button using beads in the front and you can just embellish them with other beads. You can use felt and here I've made a, a felt brooch with a black and white stranded threads I've used in the, for my dulcet buttons. You can even go bigger piece of wall art and 
people who put these just hang them on the wall. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to uh, learn how to make a dorset button, there is uh, information on my website on how to make the basic actual button itself. But I must admit, it's much more fun if you come to a class. And uh, then you can ask all the various questions that I haven't put onto my website. And what I suggest is, uh, if you go to my events page, I do have classes at uh, Hardy's um, Cottage Visitor Centre and the next class is in um, September, I think it is. But just go to my website and I'll, you'll find details about where my classes are.